I wanted to take a few minutes here to go over the syllabus while we will have an opportunity to continue to chat about this in our first class uh, the synchronous session that we'll be having I did want to go over some of the things in here so first off as you can see our class is online uh, it's primarily asynchronous which means not in real time now that doesn't mean that it is a self-paced class you'll see later on in the syllabus that there is a schedule that we will follow and there are due dates for all of the assignments so that uh, while it's asynchronous, it isn't self-paced, and it's sort of designed in such a way that, um, you know, this is a three-unit class, and typically a three-unit class over a 15-week semester would meet three hours a week over 15 weeks, so 45 contact hours. Now, in our case, we're doing this class during the summer, where there's about eight and a half weeks of time that we're spending so a little bit more than half of what you would get in a traditional semester uh, what that means is that for the most part you are looking at essentially spending about five hours a week of direct instruction so as you look through the different sections you'll see that while there's a fair amount of content there if you equate it to sitting in a classroom and either engaging in some sort of uh, project-based learning or discussions or maybe direct instruction from myself there should be roughly five hours of instruction per session on average um, and you'll see that there's some prep time included with that as well as some uh, follow-up activities or some assignments that you've got to complete throughout the semester and it's important to note that the expectation at the graduate level is for each hour of class time that you have that it is expected that you would spend about one to two hours on average of preparation time or follow-up time so that includes everything from the readings that you might have to prepare for the course to an asynchronous discussion form that you might have outside the time that you in the case of this course would spend searching through and reading the literature that you're going to be using for your literature review the time actually spent planning out how you're going to sequence your literature review and actually writing it up that would all be considered in that additional outside of class time that you're looking at there so I mentioned that to you up front because I want to give you a realistic expectation of essentially what are the traditional expectations for engagement in a course based upon a Carnegie unit and in this case this course is worth three Carnegie units so as I start with that um, basically up front you've got all of my contact information as this is an online course and given the nature of where we are right now and the fact that uh, at least when we start this course most of the counties that I suspect you all are in including the one that I'm located in are still in a shelter in place uh, position and uh, the university for the summer has decided to go with a remote learning model so basically most of our contact is going to be through electronic means over the telephone through zoom skype or through email or within the canvas course shell that we have so you can see all of those sort of electronic ways of getting a hold of me it'd be nice if we had the opportunity to sit down uh, with each of you uh, in my office in Wilderman and go over your topics and talk about your interests when it comes to research and the thesis uh, but unfortunately we won't be able to do that this semester so moving past that you'll see that there's a general course description here which I'd encourage you to read as well as the class objectives or the course objectives and one of the things that you'll note as we go through the course each of the sessions that are in canvas will list off which of these course objectives that it is focusing upon within that particular session most of them tend to focus upon a single one but there are a couple there that will focus upon two or three different ones uh, as you're looking through so it's worthwhile to look at that 
Uh, moving along, you'll see that there's a textbook that's required. Now, a quick note about that. We actually will only use one chapter in that textbook. So if you want to hold off on purchasing that textbook for now, you can. I will tell you that you will use the textbook extensively in the methodology course that you'll be doing in the fall and then the final thesis course that you do next spring. Um, so you will need to buy it at some point. However, we do have a subscription to it um, as an ebook through our university library. So for the purposes of this course, if you wanted to put off purchasing it for now, you could and still not be uh, disadvantaged by doing so because there's a copy of that particular chapter in Canvas along with all of the other readings. Similarly, while the APA manual, the 2020 edition of the APA manual, which is the latest edition, the seventh edition, is recommended, between the materials that APA has put on their own website as well as the online writing lab that's available at the University of Purdue that's another one that you can probably get everything that you need for that particular item online so it's probably one that unless you see yourself doing a lot of academic writing outside of the thesis or in addition to the thesis that's probably one that I'd rely upon those free resources for uh, looking at the activities and assessments throughout the course, we will have some discussions. I think right now there are uh, two that I know for sure, graded discussions that will be there. Um, your literature review will actually begin with an assignment called the Literature Search Strategies, which will be followed by the Annotated Bibliography. Once you've got your essentially literature organized through the bibliography, uh, you'll want to create an outline for how you plan on synthesizing that. Then, ideally, you'll write uh, a portion of that, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a uh, section or a subsection, and I'll give you some feedback on that. And while that's a one-time thing, I want to encourage you to send drafts of your document, and I'll mention this throughout the course, to me as many times and as frequently as it is useful to you. So if it's useful for you to have me read each section as you're going through, that's fine. If you're struggling and there's a paragraph that you just finished writing that you really don't know if it kind of works or not, I'm happy to look at that as well. So while this is one time where you are forced to get my feedback, um, I'm happy, and not just happy, I'm actually eager uh, to provide feedback to you throughout the process as often as you need because it's been my experience that those folks that seek additional feedback, uh, they tend to do not just much better in the course, but they tend to produce a much better product. And by producing a much better product, it sets them up for the next course in the sequence when you're actually undertaking a, a research project um, in the fall. Um, you'll be in a much better position to be able to work on that as well. So after you send me a sample and get feedback on that, you'll actually get a complete draft of your literature review that you will upload and then get feedback on that from one of your peers, one of your colleagues. And then near the end of the semester, you're going to submit your actual literature review to me. And while you may think at that point that, you know, your literature review is done, I will tell you that as an overall part of the thesis, the literature review is something that you're going to continue to pick and poke at and refine and add to and revise really until you submit your final thesis. So while the draft that you end in this course, so when you submit that literature review item here at the end of the semester, um, it'll be close to finish, but really until you submit your final thesis, you're always going to be picking and poking at that particular one. And so that'll come basically with roughly a week left in the semester. And then for the final week of the semester, we'll actually be focusing upon a short document that is designed to essentially get you to um, really start to think about a little bit your particular um, 
your particular research project that you're going to undertake in the fall and you know how that might look so that when you start that fall course that you'll hit the ground running because you won't be worried about at that point thinking to it okay based upon everything I've learned from the literature review now what am I going to do you'll have already started that process of thinking uh, the way through so you can see here here's a schedule or pacing guide so you'll notice that while there are nine weeks or actually roughly eight and a half weeks that we have the course and there are nine sessions they're not designed to be done in as a session a week so what you'll see is most weeks there's a couple of sessions that we do and then we spend a lot of time on a couple of them so our first class our first synchronous class is going to meet at five on wednesday the 20th and we probably won't spend the full two and a half hours here um, it won't be a content-based class. It'll have an opportunity for you guys to ask questions about anything in the, the, uh, the syllabus that you have uh, concerns about or that you want to clarify. And then really just a chance for us to get to know each other a little bit, uh, particularly given that this is going to be primarily an asynchronous course. This would be a good chance to just to start to build some community with uh, the group and with me as well, because while you guys might know each other a little bit, you're all going to be new to me, so it's an opportunity for me to get to know you guys as well. Um, but during that first week, you want to review those first two sessions, and then there's a discussion item. In week two, we're looking at sessions three and four, and that's when the search strategy comes in. So really, week two is actually when you're going to be doing most of your literature searching and trying to find things. Uh, week three is when we move on to uh, sessions five and six and that's when your annotated bibliography is going to be due at the end of week three and then we've got week four where um, there's only one session that you're going to be focusing upon and again it's that session six so you see that's a repeat from there so again the content is still going to be relevant to you there as you put together your outline and then weeks five six seven and eight you'll see uh, item, sessions 7 and 8 are the ones that we're doing all of those times and during that period of time you see your sample is due then a couple of weeks later is when you're going to do the peer review part um, in between you're going to have a discussion topic that's in there and then at the end of week 8 which will be the 13th of July is when your literature review is due and then we finish off with that short week that I guess it's a little bit better than a half a week because it's five days by the looks of it. Yeah, five days. Um, that's when we'll focus upon session nine, and that's when you'll do that initial research focus assignment. So uh, the rest of the document is really just some course policies uh, that I have personally, and you'll also see some GSOE policies that we have, some of which are institutional, some of which are specific to the GSOE, but I'd encourage you to read through all of those so that you're familiar with them, particularly the plagiarism one um, and the differentiation between intentional plagiarism and unintentional plagiarism, because given that we're going to be doing a lot of writing and um, that writing is focused upon literature in the field, uh, this is an area that you want to make sure that you're somewhat familiar with as you're going through. And then there's some of the uh, information here about the GSOE's student dispositions. And you can see all of the disposition checklist here at the end. And that basically is the syllabus. So I look forward to meeting with you. Uh, in a few days, and if you have any questions at that point about the syllabus, please come to class with them.